sausage. I got my barbecue shoes on. I'm going down to the house for sausage. I got my barbecue shoes on. I'm gonna put me a brat in a red hot foot long. Welcome to BarbecuePitBoys.com. Today we're going to do some beef and bone stew on the grill. All right, we're doing some indirect grilling here. And here I have a beef roast. This is about a four and a half pound, maybe five pound roast. This happens to be ribeye. But you could use sirloin or top round or bottom round or uh, top side or silver side. And here I've got about three pounds of beef bone. And you're going to need a few cloves of garlic and a few uh, stalks of celery. And I got uh, a few uh, carrots, three or four carrots. You're gonna need a lemon. You need a large onion or two uh, medium onions. And for this recipe, you're gonna need uh, these boilers. We've got about 24 of them. Sometimes they're called pearl onions. And here we're gonna use about 16 small potatoes, maybe three or four pounds of potatoes. And uh, this is some Worcestershire sauce. And here we've got some pit boy seasoning there. That's uh, salt pepper and uh, granulated garlic. Here I've got a little bit of olive oil and you're going to need a couple quarts of water. Let's put this together. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to take one of your pans here and throw it on the grill with a little bit of olive oil or veggie oil because we want to saute up some onions and uh, a few of those garlic cloves. Now, if you've never had this beef stew on the grill before, you're definitely missing something out of your life. You're going to want to check this out. You always want to make a big batch because uh, you're going to want some leftovers to keep in the fridge for a few days because it only gets better. Man, it's a good eat. So here I'm going to take a few crushed garlic. And... Uh, get this started here, with this uh, roast, we want to cut it into steaks, about one and a half inch thick steaks. Now of course this is a ribeye, so it's uh, got a lot of marbling, a lot of fat in it. And, uh, but you may want to use, like I said, a top round or a bottom round roast, they're much leaner, or even a sirloin. Because as we simmer this here uh, on the grill, going to get nice and tender so you certainly don't have to use a piece of ribeye like this. I'm using it because I had it in the fridge. All right and we're going to trim off a little bit of the excess fat. Now of course you could go out and buy uh, your uh, stew beef already prepared by your butcher but it's, uh, it's a lot more expensive. You'll save, uh, save a bit of money if you uh, do it this way, cut your own. Or you could maybe pick up some uh, round steaks, like a London broil, and you can cut those up into uh, beef cubes like we're going to do here. All right. Now the oil is good and hot, so let's throw a three or four cloves of crushed garlic in there and we're gonna throw that one chopped onion in there. There's never enough onion in beef stew. Now here I'm also gonna take the oil and I'm gonna uh, put them on these beef bones because we're gonna sear these up briefly on the grill as you're gonna see in a couple minutes. And then take your seasoning. This is garlic, pepper, and uh, got some salt in there. And you want to liberally season your beef and your beef bones with it. All right. Those onion and garlic, you're done. pull them off the fire. All right, now let's take those beef steak there and uh, put them over the hot coals. 
because we're going to sear these here for about a minute or two each side, just briefly. We want to get some texture for this beef. It goes real good in this beef bone stew. Now, of course, uh, most people do this on the kitchen stove, but they won't even come close to the flavor of doing it on a barbecue grill. All right. A couple minutes has gone by. Let's flip these steaks. Man, look at that. Nothing like the smell of grilled beef. All right, these are done. Put them back on the cutting board. Now you're going to want to take your uh, beef bones and you're going to do the same thing. You want to do a quick sear. There's a lot of fat, of course, in the beef bone. You got all that beef marrow. This is the magic to this beef stew. You always want to add some beef bone to your stew. Again, just a minute or two each side. Now, if you've got a good grill, you can just uh, control the flames by putting the cover on there. And we'll do that for a minute. And now I'm going to start cutting up this uh, steak. Now, you can see we just lightly seared the outside. I didn't want to cook the steak because we're going to be tenderizing this beef on that real slow simmer we're going to do for about two hours on this grill. All right, let's check these. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing like fire for special effects. All right, let's get these beef bones in the pot. Now, we're going to add about two quarts of water. Now, with this recipe, you could uh, maybe go two and a half quarts, even three quarts. Like a nice thick stew, so we'll use you about two quarts. Now, let's cut up this beef. And we're going to cut them up in about one and one and a half inch cubes. Yeah, that's simple to do. You get the idea. Throw it all in the pot. Man, starting to smell good already. Now, adding some more uh, Spices in there, or the seasoning. Cut up the rest of this beef. Yeah, give it a good stir. And again, we 
we're just going to do a light simmer for about two hours. So we're going to pull that pan off the direct hot coals there and this way we can control the simmer. Put a cover on the pan and put a cover on the grill. All right. All right, about an hour has gone by. Let's check this out. And look at that. You can see what that beef bone is doing. This makes a real good broth. Because we got a, too much of a boil going on there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it a little farther away from the coals. All right, about two hours has gone by. The beef has been tenderized, bones have been cooked, and this is where we're gonna add those chopped veggies. Take a look at that. Bam. All right, and this is where we're gonna put in the chopped celery and carrots, I'll put in those pearl onions, and here we got the potatoes. Man, you smell that? It smells good. And this is optional, but we like to add a couple tablespoons of leaven. And of course you want to add a couple tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. This will add an additional tang to this uh, beef stew here. Give it a good mix. Oh, about 25 minutes to go, again. And then, of course, you want to sample it. You may have to add a little more salt, pepper. It's going to work real good. All right. Just getting ready to serve this up. Now I've got some bread. I'm going to make some garlic bread, garlic cheese bread. And this is optional, but uh, I'm going to use about two tablespoons of uh, all-purpose flour here because I'm going to thicken up this uh, broth a little bit more. And it works real well if you just put it in that hot broth right there and just give it a good mix with your spoon. This will thicken up this stew. Yeah, life is good around the pit when you're making up some beef stew. All right, another couple more minutes. Right through the miracle of time, this beef and bone stew is done. Yeah, we'll pull it off the grill. Cause we're gonna wanna make some uh, garlic bread to go with this. Of course you want to serve your stew with some good bread. Of course we're not going to show you how to do this. You know all about making uh, garlic bread. We got some cheese garlic bread here. All right, it's time to eat. Man. 
that look good or what? Get yourself a big bowl. Grab yourself some garlic cheese bread. You getting hungry or what? In fact, uh, we're going to have to apologize, as always, but we're going to have to eat some of this right in front of you. Cut! Somebody please go get that stew. So the next time you're looking for a recipe for your barbecue, you can check out the barbecuepitboys.com.